Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of a funnel beaker individual from Sweden. Um, there's actually two funnel beaker individuals from this location but I'm only going to do a, a video on this one because the other one is kind of a low quality sample. You can download um, the other one on my Google Drive folder and this one is also going to be on my Google Drive folder and the link to download this file is going to be in the description of this video. Uh, so this is an individual from Sweden. His um, Y DNA is I2A1, which is nowadays most common uh, in the Balkans, and his mitochondrial DNA, DNA is J1, which I don't really know much about. And this is what this individual is looking like. He's predicted to have green color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and blonde hair. Uh, with my eye shape predictor too, he's predicted to have um, actually South Asian eye shape. So uh, South Asian eye shapes are not any different from European or Middle Eastern eye shapes. It's the same eye shape. Uh, the main thing that you really want to watch out for is the East Asian and the African. And he does not have an East Asian eye shape, does not have an African eye shape. He's got a West Eurasian eye shape. And the little intricacies of South Asian versus Middle Eastern versus Estonian, um, that doesn't really matter all that much. They all kind of have the same... Um, eye shape as each other. Uh, he's predicted to have wavy hair texture and he's predicted to have uh, blue eyes, white skin and red or blonde hair with snipper free. Uh, with YSEC he's predicted to have blonde hair, blue eyes and it looks like not exactly white skin, more like light olive skin tone is what I'm seeing with the YSEC prediction. He has BH1 and BH2. Uh, BH3 status is undetermined but he probably has it as well as the most uh, funnel beaker and globular arm for culture individuals and he does not have BH4. Uh, based on his genotypes in SLC45A2, Keto G, Tirp1, SLC24A5, he's got light skin and other light traits. He does not have East Asian EDAR and he does not have any derived variants in MC1R. Um, so the not have that is an MC1R and he's not genotyped for the main, I, main mutation in IRF4 that has to do with red hair. So I don't know where the snipper free is getting the, the idea that he might have red hair. I think this comes this comes down to the uh, method of calculation with snipper free. They greatly overestimate the probability of red hair and it's a consistent thing with snipper free where they give you a result for red hair when in reality you don't even have any of the MC1R variants. So it's just, a, um, it's just an issue with snipper free it seems like. This is what this individual scores with MZLPK11 on GED match. As you can see, he's mostly scoring southern or basically European farmer components. Uh, there's 58% Neolithic plus 8% Basal. Uh, the little bit of African is also due to affinities to Africans that were present in the farmers. Uh, and for the European hunter-gatherer component, which this individual also does have, there is the 25.6% European hunter-gatherer that he's scoring. Uh, with the oracle, he's getting more as a mixture of LBK plus uh, basically Mesolithic hunter-gatherer or LBK plus Bokstein or whatever, any kind of European hunter-gatherer does the trick. Basically a mixture of, well not Eastern hunter-gatherers, mostly Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. Uh, a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer or a mixture of European Neolithic farmer plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer would be this individual. Uh, with Yerujinsky 13 Oracle, he's closest to Spanish from Andalusia, followed by Spanish from Aragon. Very Southwest European result, um, but even modern Spanish people are obviously a lot more uh, European, Indo-European than this individual. Modern Spanish people have actual Yamne and Indo-European admixture, which this individual does not have. He lacks it. And with Pun DNA LK12, you can see here he's not scoring any Caucasus HG, so no Yamne admixture, but there is 29% European hunter-gatherer and there is 56% Anatolian Neolithic, and there is also Near East, which also comes from the farmers. Um, with the Oracle, he's closest to basically all kinds of European European farmers. Uh, and and this is what he scores with Pond DNA LK10. Look at how uh, look at how pure this result is. There is no Sub-Saharan, no ASI, no East Asian, no Amerindian, no nothing. This is a very uh, it's a very white result. Like it's a very white individual. There is only the 1.7% Oceanian, which is kind of kind of spoiling the picture. But it's a very white individual and um, definitely heavy on the ENF or Mediterranean component. Uh, and with the Oracle, he's actually closest to Sardinians, followed by Spanish and Basques. So um, very. You know, it's, it's a white individual in the sense of phenotype and traits, but I guess he's more Mediterranean than he is like Northern European, because obviously closest populations to him are Sardinians. Uh, this is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, there is some ancestral of Eurasian, there is 2.5% ancestral of Eurasian. He got this from Eastern Hunter-Gatherer admixture, which was present in the um, final beakers. 
uh, with the Oracle Colossus once again to Sardinians and actually getting more as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Matala. You can see 77% Anatolian Neolithic plus 23% Matala. That's basically the admixture that created this individual. Uh, a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic or European Neolithic plus some kind of Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. And this is what this Funnel Beaker individual is scoring with Gedrosia K3. Uh, as you see very heavily, very heavy on the West Eurasian component, 98% West Eurasian. Um, actually more West Eurasian, if, if we take West Eurasian Drift as the benchmark for what it is to be white, then this individual is more white than the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers who lived in the same region because they score like 90% West Eurasian with this calculator. We're taking a look at his traits with my genome analyzer tool. So all of this he's not genotyped for, so we can't know if he's a warrior or a warrior with a comt or an MAOA. We can't really know his genotype for preference in pro, but what we do know is he's got AG here in ZRZ2, which is implicated in a slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly increased likelihood of schizophrenia. And what we also do know is that he's got AA genotype in TAC1, which means A1A1 genotype. Um, I want to remind you this is a super rare genotype for humans. Uh, but it's actually the default, it's kind of the default genotype for monkeys. Like if you look at gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, they all have AA here, they all have A1A1. Um, Neanderthals mostly have AA, Neanderthals also mostly have A1A1 in TAC1 variation of DRD2. And for every A allele, for every A1 allele, um, something is either 40% or 20% decrease in av av availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So this is a greatly, this genotype comes with a greatly reduced availability of the dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Um, to put this into perspective, this genotype, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like taking antipsychotics. Like if you take, take in Zyprexa, for example, it's kind of similar to having this genotype naturally. So this individual is basically living his life with greatly reduced availability of dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, what, what does this lead to? This leads to various addictions, like any kind of whatever. Well, I, should, I shouldn't say that on YouTube. It might lead to it might lead to demonetization. I shouldn't say that. I'm gonna bleep out those parts. But it might lead to all kinds of issues with. Uh, with addiction. It also leads to ADHD, Parkinson's, alcoholism, all kinds of really negative stuff uh, in humans. I don't know, why, why don't monkeys have those traits? Why don't monkeys have those um, negatives? Because they have AA here. Why, why doesn't it, why doesn't this genotype, well maybe they do. I don't know, Do are monkeys addictive? Do they get addicted to stuff? I don't know. So, he's got TT here, which is a typical genotype for most humans, and it leads to uh, short form 5-HTTLPR, which is typical. Uh, most of you guys watching have short form 5-HTTLPR, which, which comes together with some problems. It comes together, it, it comes together with uh, uh, problems when it comes to serotonin transport, and you have increased likelihood of depression. Not me. I'm sort of the exception. I have a uh, long form 5-HTTLPR, so I'm good. But you guys probably have short form 5-HTTLPR. You can check this in your file. Uh, for lactose persistence, does not carry European lactose persistence. For empathy, well, these two aren't genotype, but here he's got GG, which means the individual has two variants for lower levels of empathy. For diabetes, well, not genotype for this one, which is all that matters. Everything else is kind of unimportant. Uh, does not carry hemochromatosis variants, does not carry anything. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles in APOE2. No risk alleles in APOE2 here. So no risk alleles for Alzheimer's. For Alzheimer's, these two these two variations are the most important ones. Uh, the other two, they are, these three don't really matter all that much. For miscellaneous section, no micro P, which I'm not going to pronounce uh, because YouTube monetization. And also here, once again, does not have micro P. Uh, once again, I'm not going to pronounce because YouTube monetization. Um, for albinism and atypical traits, not a carrier for this, not a carrier for this. NCC here, which leads to decreased risk of cleft lip and palate, once again does not carry the uh, variant variant that increases the risk of cleft lip and palate. So it's just a very normal normal guy. The only thing abnormal in this genome is this, like the AA in TAC1, the A1A1 genotype in TAC1, super abnormal. Um, and if you're curious, do I have this or do I not have this? Just Google TAC1 or yeah, Google Talk 1 DRD2 and you're gonna see the variation. Look the variation up in your file, you're gonna see your result for Talk 1. 
And um, that's pretty much all there is to this individual. You can download his genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.